Hi, and welcome back to Get a Clue Casual Gamer. We are continuing with our look at different dice games with the hope that we can find certain games that will help, uh, especially for those who are working with uh, older adult groups. And we know that games and puzzles help us cognitively and when we're working with um, seniors, we want to try and find games that they either know or something that will work well to um, keep, th th they won't scare them off, basically. Uh, these games are all fine for uh, older children, especially this one is a little bit more complicated, so we're, we'll talk about that one. Um, but family games or, in the case of this, party. Um, we're looking at Bunko. We're getting a clue, C-L-U-E, about Bunko. Uh, C for components, L for length, U for uniqueness, E for ease. C components. What are you going to find when you open this box? Well, I have a deluxe version and I just realized I left one of the components in the back bedroom and I'm not going to go get it. Um, but in this box, in this container, I have quite a few things that might not be in every group. I have a whole pile, probably 12, because secret, it takes 12 people to really play this game right, correctly and best. But anyway, we have individual pads for scoring. We have a pad for scoring the entire game. And in this deluxe edition, I also have this little fuzzy dice that does have a reason and a bell, which also has a purpose. And let me get them all in my hand. Nine dice. Okay. Oh, and the, the rules, which is what I left in the back bedroom. But it comes with it. Now, not all sets will come with all these. Many will not come with these. I'll just tell you that right now. These are kind of like, just kind of like spruce it up a little bit. Uh, make a, you need a noisemaker, but a noisemaker can be you saying, Okay, round over. Let's switch. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so components, that's it at the most. This is the big box. Length of play, it's not a short game. It, I, I would say that you plan on an hour, plan on an hour, because it's going to take a few games. There's six rounds, so plan on an hour. Ten minutes a round, yeah, you might be able to do it in Less than that, but with if you're working with seniors that have mobility problems, it that will make it a longer game. Just telling you right there because we move in it. So length, plan on about an hour. Uniqueness, well you'd think that with dice and a score sheet that this would not be a very unique game. And in some ways, it's not. It's similar to many other things, and in other ways, it's very different. So let's start off with what's the same. You're rolling dice. You're trying to get a specific score. The higher, the better. 10,000 points wins. Or no, that's the last game. Sorry, that was Farkle. This is Bunko. <laughs> I, I'm doing so many different videos that I'm, I'm mixing my games up. Okay, so you think that just tossing dice and scoring. Okay, we're done. You know, this is easy. But the complication, the difference in this game is, first of all, it really plays best with 12 people. Multiples of four is a must. Four, eight, twelve. Twelve is the best. 
it's three tables of four people. And you begin, and they're numbered. Uh, some people call it the head table and table one and two. I think that might complicate, pe confuse people having a head table and a table one. So I would personally just do table one, two, three and be done with it. And table one being the head table. And whoever is at the head table, they're the ones who set the pace of the game. At the beginning of the round, there are six rounds. Beginning of the round, oops, let me go. Begin. At, when somebody at that head table, that first table, gets to, to when a team gets to over 21 points, Everyone stop. Yeah. All the other tables, even if they haven't gotten to 21, or maybe they even got, went past 21, but not until one of the teams at the head table hits 21 does the round end. <clears throat> at the end of the round, whichever team lost is moving from one, table 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1. Little round robin there. The winning team that's staying at their table, one of them has to get up. They were sitting across from each other, and now they that one person has to go and sit next to because they are no longer a team. The, the losers from the last table come, and one of them sits down across from each of the, the winners from the previous round, and they are now the team, new teams. And it continues like that after every round, six rounds. At the end of each round, the losers get up, move to the next table. The winners, one of them switches seats, and the losers sit down, and they play the next round. And so that is the most unique thing about this. Throwing the dice is not unique. It's all chance. You're trying to get points. You get points by ha by throwing either three of a kind or at least one of the number that that round is. Round one, you're trying to get one. Round two, you're trying to get two, and so on. That's the normal thing that we can all basically understand. Okay, it's round one. I didn't get a one. I don't have any points. Round one. I don't get any points. Next person. Oh, the next person got one one. So they can they have one point and they don't have any points. So they, that team made one point. So that's it. So it's unique yet it's very different in certain ways. There's no... Um, strategy it's all chance all chance so it, it can for people who aren't used to playing a lot of games it's just a fun pastime it gives you a, it definitely gives you a chance to talk with people at your table and because of all the round robin seating and moving and stuff you tend to by the end of the sixth round, you you have probably sat at a table with almost everyone, if not everyone else who's there for the, the game day, morning, afternoon, night, whenever it is. So it's a social event more than it's a strategy and game game, but that's okay. Especially if you're thinking of this for a party or for a party with non-gamers or for a senior adult program. Um, this is something that gives them a chance to socialize, gives them a chance to uh, get to know people and spend time talking with people and using these dice as an excuse. So there you have it. Um, e. Ease of learn, teach, play, how easy is it to find, how easy is it on your pocketbook. Well then, um, easy, I've already talked to you all about the game. That's basically the game. You're trying to get the few points that you can eke out. A round is when somebody at the, one of the teams at the head table gets 
to 21 points. The moment that happens, the, the round is technically over. Whoever's rolling finishes their roll, and that's the end of that round, and you round robin. That's it. That's the game. So it's not hard to learn the game. The moving people around is the most complicated thing. Easy to find. You can find it. It's, it's a mass market game. It has been out for years. Um, you know, one place says it came out in 2004, but that's not it. It's older than that. Uh, the basic game is older than that, like 1800s, early 1900s. Um, so easy to find. You can find it. Uh, easy on your pocketbook. You can get it for anywhere from $12 to $25. Uh, but here's another thing. It has, for 12 people, you need 12 dice, the rules, and the score sheets. You can download the score sheets. You can download the rules. If you have nine dice to spare, 12 people can play Bunko and spend an hour or more <laughs> socializing and having fun. Yeah, it's not the height of, um, <clears throat> of deduction or decision making, but it can make for a good social time. So, there you have it. That's Bunko. And you don't have to spend a bunch of money and buy the package deal. You could literally go online, pull up nine of those dice that I keep on telling you. Just buy a bunch of dice and you'll have what you need for almost every game. And um, have a good time. Don't expect great Great strategy in this game. But socializing, you definitely will get some socializing done. All that round robin. So until next time, God bless you and your family and happy gaming. Bye.